the fucking baby is taking up all this weight. Can you show it? Yeah, we put this fat suit on her every time she naps and goes to bed. So I have to like she... fucking squeeze in over here. And if I sit too close to her, she's like. <laughs> she goes. <laughs> she like looks up. Whisper. Should we title this ASMR my birth story? I wanted to do a story time about my birth story because I feel like it's kind of interesting. It's definitely not your typical birth story. Where where do you want to start? Like, do you want to start at in North Carolina in the Honda Fit? I guess so. Yeah, I found out I was pregnant when we were in North Carolina, um, living in our car and i was like fuck this is not good <laughs> we didn't want to have a baby yeah we were we'll not trying to it. have a baby um we were actually not planning on having a baby ever why is she awake she's ripping ass too bro i can smell it <laughs> hi you like ripping ass don't you you want to be part of the video <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i found out i was pregnant we were staying in our car um, and just road tripping. So we were in North Carolina when I found out I was pregnant. And then when I showed Micah the test, he just started fucking laughing at me. Um, so that was a weird reaction. When like really crazy shit happens to me in my life, I feel like I don't handle things normally. No, yeah. Like I understood why he was laughing. I'm, I'm just joking. It like, it was valid. But um, yeah, we were really freaked out honestly and we weren't planning on having a child we weren't planning on mind you we're homeless at this time yeah i just i'm getting a lot of comments being like why do you have a baby if you live in a van well we lived in a car and we weren't planning on having the baby we're living in a in a honda fit scrunched in there with solar panels on top yeah living outside of gyms traveling the world or the United States. We weren't trying to have a baby. Yeah. Because I think that's what a lot of people are assuming that we did a, had a baby on purpose, but we did not. So backtrack a little bit, we're in North Carolina, you do the test, mm -hmm. it shows that you're pregnant, which I don't know how that happened. Were you in a pool and there was like a little floater? We're, so we're wondering. Maybe, because I know well, you're a virgin. I'm a virgin. I got a pill to terminate the pregnancy. Yes. Um, because that was the plan. And it's not, we grew up Christian, okay? We're no longer Christian. That's a whole nother story. But we had talked about this and how we stood on this topic morally, if it was how we felt about that, how we felt about abortion and stuff like that. And we both felt that an early, early termination, before this is like a fetus, before it has like any brain development or anything like that, while it's the fucking little embryo thing yeah, that's that like looks like it, it's not I really a baby. I, we caught the pregnancy very early on. We had talked about this already, and so we yeah. just went through with our plan. We ordered these pills, got them sent to a house that we were going to stay at on the West Coast. We traveled from the East Coast to the West Coast to vacation at this house with my family while you're pregnant. Yes. Right? And our plan was to not tell anyone that I was pregnant. Yes. Um, because Micah's family is like hella Christian. So if we tell them that I'm pregnant, and then obviously don't keep the pregnancy, then they would just flip their lids. I was actually like going through it in the first trimester. It was pretty bad for me. And I'll be honest, I wasn't probably the best, most thoughtful boyfriend during a difficult time while you're pregnant and certain things like that. I viewed you as kind of uh, still very capable and not really anything's different yeah and so maybe hindsight but also you know what i was slightly angry that this had happened because i felt like i was trying to be really careful about this and you were being less careful about it yeah 
that all happens. Um, and then we got to California. We got to the house that we were going to vacation at with his family. And at that point, I was like very insecure about the way I looked because I already was starting to look very different. And um, like my body was like definitely not to my liking. And the whole trip is like we're swimming in a swimming pool. Everyone's in swimsuits. So I was like super insecure about the way I looked. And I think that coupled with at the time, I just felt like I didn't have anyone that was really there for me. I wasn't there for her. Yeah, my I, I wasn't was really just... there for her. I was, I was like thinking this is really her fault. I mean, it was. <laughs> I think it was mostly her fault because I said, you know, hey, take the plan B. She's saying she didn't look great, but she looked great. I mean, maybe for a pregnant person, but well, you were pre you were only f you, you weren't that many weeks pregnant. I wasn't, and that's why it was upsetting that I already looked weird. I was really insecure. Plus, I felt like Michael wasn't there for me at the time, and I just wanted someone to talk to about it. So I ended up telling his sister, who I was like best friends with her um, for a really long time. I thought if I told her, she wouldn't tell anyone if I had told her not to tell anyone. And I was just like, yeah, I just need to rant about it, you know, to like a girl, because a girl would understand more. And then she ended up telling everybody, <laughs> like the whole, like his entire family. Oh yeah, we're not trying to throw shade on my sister though. Oh too yeah, much. because Like she's a Christian, she doesn't believe in abortion. A lot of, well, none of them believe in abortion. They all think it's like the same as shooting a baby in the head apparently we strongly don't view it that way we view it as if there's no brain development and the thing the little embryo thing can't feel i think life is special because of like thought emotion mm -hmm. feeling any of these things you know and like yeah. at a certain point i'll say a fetus can feel mm. fetus has feeling and stuff like that and so it becomes much more difficult to make a decision yeah. but we kind of know that early on, without a brain, without brain development or heart development or these certain things, the fetus doesn't have that. Right. And so it's it's much less valued. It's still valued because you have a potential human, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's much less valued. And so I think Christians tend to put a lot of emphasis on the potential human. Basically, my sister, through like a form of deductive reasoning, was like, hey this is murder that's how how she views it and she's like even if i have to like break my promise to kiyomi i'm like preventing a murder so yeah. she tells my parents who in like a really awkward way confront me about it sit me down and say hey we know you're planning on having an abortion Mm. And it's like starts out as like a civil conversation. Yeah. Right? For the next, like, how many days we were there? Five days. The vacation is ruined. Yeah. We're arguing about this every single day. Is it right? Is it wrong? They believe it's wrong to take a plan B the very next day and terminate a fertilized egg. They yeah. believe they they believe that that's the same as murdering somebody. They believe that birth them, control and even like an IUD is murder. They they think it's the same thing as putting a gun to some random person's head and pulling the trigger. I don't really agree with any uh, anything that they're saying except that at a certain point in a pregnancy a baby starts to have brain development and you don't want to have an abortion then because you're killing something that can feel pain and and is actually actually there instead of not there like a fertilized egg isn't a human it's the potential to be human somehow they get wind that the pills are coming yeah i think one of us they, must have they fucking accidentally said something about that. My mom intercepts the pills. <laughs> they come there. She intercepts it. It's a whole issue. Uh, we're really upset. I don't want to get into it because the villain is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need to explain it because we're fine now. We've made up. We're, we're fine. Everything's fine, kind of, to an extent. I just can't trust people with certain things anymore. Long did... story short, the pills 
had been destroyed by his mom and without our permission obviously yes and i lost my lid you know shit hit the fan yeah you know i cussed my parents out oh that, they also that's... told my parents after i asked them not to i was like i'll tell my parents because i don't want that coming from you but then they told my parents so that was honestly the main driving factor into like us deciding to keep the pregnancy was that we didn't want to have both of our families looking at us basically looking at us like we're murderers we were kind of forced into this situation because they they took something of ours and they they told your family about it and they were getting people involved and instead of it being a decision where we talk to them we still have our choice and you guys can impact us by being intelligent people and, and making sense mm -hmm. and talking to us and making sense. But instead of that happening, they tried to control us into doing something by stealing something from us and getting rid of it and then bringing your family into it um, yeah. and, and and having them, you know, whatever impact they could have on you, especially after you told them not to. Uh, and so now it's like we're being controlled and it made me strongly want to do the opposite of what they were telling us. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like they were on our side trying to help us. It seemed like they just wanted something because they felt it strongly and didn't give a shit about what I felt or what Kiyomi felt. Yeah, and they didn't seem to even understand that how badly it was going to affect our lives because Again, we're homeless. We're, we're very young too, and we were not planning on having children. At the time, at we're living in a car. We're, yeah. we're, you know, we're living in a Honda Fit. It didn't make any sense at all to bring a child into the world when we're like having difficulty taking care of ourselves. But now we're good with them. We're happy. We love the little baby. We're happy we have the baby. If I could go back in time and change things, I don't know if I would, but back I then, I definitely would have done shit different. Yeah. I, I, mean, I didn't plan on having a kid in a van. Um, so then we were like, okay, I guess we're keeping this fucking baby. So we obviously need a place to stay. And I was trying to get into section eight housing. I was trying to figure out how we could get our own place because neither of our families were willing to accommodate us with, you know, a place to live since we weren't married. We ended up, obviously, we decided on getting a van and building it out, which took, um, I think it took like five months. We built it out, but I was um, like building it out while I was pregnant with him. And it was actually really fun because we got to like learn like carpentry shit and stuff. But the whole time I was just fucking dying. I was having like panic attacks every night about being pregnant because I was still kind of unsure about like, like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I keeping this pregnancy? I'm like really scared. What if I'm a bad mom, blah, 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 blah. All the thoughts that I think a lot of people have when they are uh, having a baby. Basically my whole pregnancy was me freaking the fuck out. And I also was really upset that I was getting fat. So <laughs> <laughs> that was the main problem. <laughs> yeah, I really did not like the fact that I was gaining so much weight. So fast forward, yeah. I'm pretty close to popping out the baby. I wanted to have a home birth because I'm really scared of hospitals. I have really bad anxiety and I don't like when people that I don't know are looking at my vagina and my butthole. So I definitely wanted a home birth. I got a midwife. Midwife ended up falling through. Didn't know what to do. And then we got a new midwife. Um, what the fuck? And my mom was letting us um, use her house to give birth in. And leading up to everything, I was just, I was hoping that she would come early because I was scared of tearing and I was scared of her getting too big. So I was kind of doing everything to get her out. And it ended up being like a week past her due date and she was still fucking cooking in there. I did a bunch of different things. First of all, I, I was drinking raspberry leaf tea every day. I got acupuncture, that's supposed to help. And then I think it was castor oil and Here, a smoothie. It. And I'm pretty sure that's what did it because the next day I lost my mucus plug and I was like, holy shit, this is it. And then another day went by I went into labor. I started having tooth pain because if you don't know, being pregnant, like if you're not high in minerals, then it strips your minerals and it's really bad. And 
I ended up getting a couple cavities while I was pregnant and so I had this tooth pain and it was so bad while I was in labor that my labor ceased and the next night I went into labor again so it was really fucking annoying um but yeah anyway so I went into labor and I was very embarrassed about everything leading up to this I didn't really want anyone to look at me down there or like I didn't even want um the midwife to like do the what's it called the um the dilation checks like i didn't want any of that um obviously why i had a home birth so i was like mom micah get the fuck out let me labor on my own like as much as possible so for like the first like early labor like a couple hours i was just like trying to handle it on my own i had the combs that you squeeze to like help with the pain because they kind of like stab your hand um, and then i got in the shower i like listen to some music in the shower and I was just letting the the hot water like hit my back and that was nice for a while but then it got to a point where it was like way too fucking painful so I got out I wanted to have a water birth but the tub that was at my mom's house was like way too shallow and like it wasn't comfortable for me so at some point I got into the tub to try to do the water birth thing I had to put washcloths under my knees and I was holding on to Micah and he was outside of the tub and it was just like not working. So I was like, wait, can you get in the tub with me? So he got in the tub with me and I was holding on to him. It was just like not working. It was so fucking uncomfortable. Like there was no comfortable way to sit in this tub. I was uncomfortable and I wasn't even giving birth. <laughs> yeah, my temperature kept fluctuating. It was really weird. I was like really hot, but I was really cold at the same time. I put on like a really big t-shirt and then I had like a giant blanket over me, but I like also wanted like a washcloth and it was just like, it was terrible. Honestly, I really was starting to regret like not getting the epidural and going to the hospital because um, I knew that I still had a long way to go and it was already like a little bit too painful for me. And I remember asking Micah, like how much longer do you think we have? Like, do you think I should go to the hospital? Cause it's it's kind of too painful and he was like i remember him being like um no i think you can do it but like he sounded very unsure and like he was totally lying to me <laughs> do you remember that i wasn't lying to you i knew you could do it because it's impossible to not do it the baby's gonna yeah. come out regardless that's the weird thing about birth is like it's not like i wasn't doing anything it was just happening to me it's like I was in hell for a little bit. Like, there's nothing you can fucking do. I was sitting, or I was like, holding onto this couch that was in um, the bedroom. And I was on my hands and knees, and that was like the best way that I could be at that point. And it started getting to a point where I was like, I cannot fucking handle this. This is like, I'm going to fucking die. This is like terrible. Leading up to the birth, I was watching a lot of home birth videos to try to make myself feel better about it because I was like kind of scared, obviously. Um, a lot of them were like really nice. Like the ladies weren't like really screaming that much. Like this one that I watched, she was like, yeah, it didn't really hurt. It was just a lot of pressure. Like. It just felt like pressure and that's it. So I wasn't expecting it to be as bad. Yeah, it was just really bad. Terrible experience. Yeah, so it got to the point where I was like screaming. Like every contraction, I was like, I was like, I don't even think I can replicate it. Can you try to replicate it? You're like, ah, 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 ah. Ew. Did you get the ick? Oh, no, because you're popping out a baby, dude. Okay, sweet. Did oh, yeah, I was ick? really worried that I was going to shit everywhere because a lot of women poop when they give birth, and I was freaked the fuck out about that. I was like, if I fucking take a shit on the ground in front of Micah and my mother, I'm going to kill myself. And, dude, I would always bring it up just whenever just to make fun of you, I feel like. Like, I feel like I would just, like, at the dinner table be like, ha ha ha, remember when you, like, shit on the ground, dude? And we we're all just like, this is awkward. Yeah, Micah would definitely bring it up all the time if I did. So I'm really glad I actually did not end up shitting. Yeah. Um, and I was ready, dude. I was like, this is gonna be a dope story. Waiting for this shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? Okay, can you 
Just leave. Okay, sorry. And then what happened? Oh yeah, I was freaking out. And I actually remember the point where the combs stopped working because I was holding onto these two combs every time I get a contraction. I was squeezing them really tight so that it would like stab into my palms. And it would actually help a lot with the pain. But I remember when the contractions got so bad that the combs were like nothing. I was like, fuck. And I was kind of starting to like try to see where her head was. So I tried to feel for her head and I was like, Micah, I feel her head. It's like right fucking there. And he was like, oh my gosh, that's great. So like, you're almost done. And then I felt a huge pop and then my water broke all over Micah's fucking feet. <laughs> and I felt again and I was like, that was not her head. That was the sack. Her head's actually way up there. So I wasn't almost done. And it was the most, like, it was so sad. Both me and Micah were like, oh, fuck. Because it was like, <laughs> it was like you had gone through so much pain. And it was like, holy shit, you're almost, all, you're almost there. All, all, you're crowning almost. All you yeah. gotta do is push her out. You're at the hardest part. And then when the water broke, <laughs> after all that pain, it was like, no, this is the beginning <laughs> of a really, really long stretch of hard parts before the hardest part yeah that realization was just such a bummer angie and the midwife come in mm -hmm. and they're like they're like how's, hey, everything, how's going? everything going we're just not even saying shit yeah we're just like really and then really i'm like oh downcast her water broke and they're like what the fuck why didn't you say anything that's like a big deal blah blah blah, blah. and we're like because we thought we were like near the end zone yeah and the end zone's actually like two hours away now yeah and so another fucking hour of screaming goes by. I probably sounded like I was getting like my limb cut off. I don't even know. It progressively kept getting worse and worse, which was the sad bit. Like, like you were in despair before and you like wanted to get the epidural before. Yeah. But then once you found that out, it was like, oh shit. But then also I knew you couldn't get the epidural. It's like not we weren't gonna do that yeah there's like no way that we were gonna be able to drive over to the hospital while i was in that state i probably would have just had the baby in the car yeah you couldn't even walk and shit yeah i was just like in way too much pain um it was actually really sad to see someone in so much pain and also knowing that your water had just broke and that it was gonna be a hell of a lot longer yeah of time to go through yeah and i'm really glad mike was there because he was like super helpful throughout the whole thing. He was very supportive. And he, you know, he got in the tub with me, which I thought was really sweet. And he was like, I was holding on to him basically the entire time. Oh yeah, so then the midwife came in and even though I had told her beforehand that I didn't want her to do dilation checks on me, she asked, do you want me to do a dilation check and see if you're close? And I was like, you know what, fuck it, go ahead. This bitch has acrylic nails on. So she sticks her fingers at me with acrylic long nails. And I'm like, holy shit, why didn't you take those off before you came in here? Anyway, I digress. Um, it's fine. She was great. We, we also really love our midwife. Yeah, she was really nice. And I really appreciated her. But because she did that shit for free too, could dude. Could have done without the acrylic nails Because we're in homeless. my vagina. And then it yeah. came time to where my body was like forcing me to push. And before that, I was thinking that I wouldn't push the baby out because um, I heard that it's like healthier to just try to breathe the baby out. But it's weird, like your body forces you to like go like and strain really hard and like, <laughs> like you're taking a massive dump. It was so painful when I would push but I couldn't stop pushing because like my body wouldn't let me, but I also couldn't make any sounds when I was pushing. I don't know, it was honestly so like the weirdest feeling ever. And then I liked the position I was in. I was on my knees still and holding on to Micah on the couch, but the midwife had me lay down on my side like this and like she like lifted my leg up, which I did not fucking appreciate. Don't but, talk about the midwife because the midwife helped us. I know, I just, I really didn't want everyone like looking at my penis, you know? I saw oh, it. Oh, well. Um, oh, yeah, that's another thing. I fucking told Micah not to look, and he looked anyway. It got to the point where I was um, crowning, and it, that was the worst feeling. It was like I could feel myself getting ripped apart, <laughs> and it burned. It was like, 
it was it's called the ring of fire they call it the ring of fire because it burns i was like ow ow it's like ow that really hurts i was like damn that sucks it kind of looks like it hurts <laughs> yeah and then micah decided to look even though i told him not to and what did you see micah i saw like a little cave <laughs> with some hair poking out of it i thought it was a little animal i thought she was giving birth to like a little squirrel or like a little raccoon because it was like the back of her head i didn't expect that so i expect to see it for like a like a forehead or something it was like the back of her head well, like just her face coming out yeah but it was the back of her head and it was a bunch of hair like, and i was like oh was there like <laughs> yeah but it, nope it was the other way and i was like whoa there's like a little rodent coming out of like this cave and then the baby slipped all the way fucking out and i was like what the hell i actually I remember like, saying oh my gosh oh my yeah, gosh yeah micah was just going oh my gosh when she was like actually coming out a couple yeah, seconds she just kind of like her head kind of went like her head kind of went like like oh that. and she turned and like her hair was like that and then she turned and she's like <laughs> but you was super cute she was very cute when and then she, uh the midwife put her on my chest and i just remember <laughs> looking at her and then i saw her hands and her hands looked just like my hands but tiny and i was like oh my god that's my hands dude that's so fucking weird and i looked at her face and i was like oh my god it's micah i just gave birth to micah and it was super trippy and it was also nice because i didn't really feel a lot of pain anymore because you kind of go numb after the baby comes out then micah cut the cord how was that for you it was pretty dope oh yeah and then i had to give birth to the placenta which i was not expecting i did not know that that was part of it i probably should have done research on that um but i didn't know it was going to be painful yeah i just i always thought that it just slipped out on its own but it took me like an hour after i gave birth to her to give birth to the placenta and then i did and then postpartum was really difficult for me i won't really talk about that a lot but if you want me to i will in like another video or something but yeah postpartum was a bitch but she was perfect she was everything i could have hoped for and more those moments after the birth were like like a couple days i just feel like we were in like a baby fairyland yeah because she kept playing maybe you could put this throw this playlist out there at the end like some of the songs yeah. um but she kept playing these like super like sad songs that are super vibey like very like sweet like calm but like very emotional songs yeah and it just was like kind of like how i guess you would view like a downer you know like like a drug like one of those oh, downers yeah, yeah. that are just like kind of like give you a lot of like euphoria but you're not like stimulated and want to run around yeah like it's and it we would almost... just like we would just stare at her listening to music and we would just start crying yeah like, but like the happiest very happy it's unlike any feeling you can experience outside of having like your own child i feel like yeah you're like looking at the most beautiful little tiny combo Hopeless. yeah but it's like you too it's also you but it's like a small little thing and it's just sitting there and then you have like a ton of euphoria um and then so much like love as well and it's like super trippy yeah and it's it's honestly like it was a very beautiful like experience so much love you can you like it's such a different kind of love too it's not really easy to explain it i feel like i almost wish that everybody could have the, the experience because it's so amazing and like crazy and we weren't homeless for those Sorry. couple months that we were there my parents were letting me stay at their house to recover and oh yeah so i found out afterwards that the reason i was in so much pain was because um of her gigantic fucking head like i guess her head was in the 95th percentile but yeah after i recovered we moved back into the van and yeah now we love our baby so much more than anything yeah that's the birth story plus the pregnancy story i guess um if you guys have any more questions about it i will totally answer them 
Um, but yeah, I thought this would be cool just to document while it's still fresh in my mind because honestly, it's interesting. Um, the female body is meant to forget the birth and everything, I guess, so that like they keep having babies. Um, and I already have like forgotten a lot of what it felt like to have contractions and to, um, you know, the, like the ring of fire and all that shit. The ring of fire, I still kind of remember. I can still like, I have a little remnant of that feeling, but everything else, it's hard to remember the feeling itself, but I do remember how much I was screaming. So that definitely helps with remembering it, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. I know a lot of people were asking for the birth story and for how I felt being pregnant and all that stuff. Um, and like why we live in a van with a baby. I also want to put out there that um, just know that you never know people's stories all the way you know like you guys don't know me as well as maybe you think you do like i i get a lot of comments being like you're a horrible mother and like why'd you have a baby in a van but like you don't know my story so fuck off <laughs> thanks for watching i'll see you guys hopefully next week i'm gonna try to post weekly again